Hey guys, this is Eric VTuber, and I am so excited to make this video for you. It has been a long time in the making. As some of you who follow my channel know, Unreal Engine has been updated to version 5.0.3, as well as now the newest Unreal Engine 5.1. But they've also been making many updates to the MetaHuman Creator, and as they have made those updates, the workflow for adding your MetaHuman into a game has changed dramatically. And this video will walk you through exactly how to take a MetaHuman and bring it into a third person game type project so you can use that to move around as well as motion capture like you see here. This is really good for those of you that wanna build environments and have a third person character that you can move around or you can walk. And in these third person environments, you can use motion capture with your iPhone to move your head, move your lips, and have a really good time. So that's what this video is all about, a step-by-step -step on how you can add your MetaHuman to a third-person game and get motion capture working. Let's dive in. First thing, let's take a look at. If you want to create a MetaHuman, you go to metahuman.unrealengine.com. I've made other videos on how to do that, so I'm just going to dive in and show you my newest MetaHuman. This can take a little bit of time depending on your internet speed and computer, but as you can see, once you get past the first screen, it will start loading the MetaHuman Creator tool. Now that we are logged in, you can see I have three different MetaHumans. The first one was the first version of Eric, and then I have a newer version. And in this newer version, when I select it, if you'll notice up in the top right of my screen, it says MetaHuman 1.2.3. And it's those of you that are making more recent MetaHumans or doing updates to MetaHumans that you need to change the workflow for importing this MetaHuman into your project and using it in the third person character along with motion capture. This other MetaHuman that I have right here is the one that I use specifically for my Iron Man uh, model. And that is, I just needed to make them shorter with no hair and a smaller head because of the size of my mesh for Iron Man. And if you wanna see those videos, you can find them on my channel. So this MetaHuman right here, the new one, is the one that I wanna bring in. And I just click on Edit Selected if I wanna make any final changes to it. But do note, this is Eric AI3. Once I'm done creating my MetaHuman, and you can watch my other videos on how to do that, it's time to bring that MetaHuman into your project. So I'm going to launch my Unreal Engine 503 instead of 5.1. So when I launch the engine, I am opening up my project. And this is the project that I wanna bring my MetaHuman into. I imagine you're one of two types of people. You either have an existing project like I do that you wanna bring your MetaHuman into, or you wanna build a completely new project from scratch. If you go to File and you click on New Project, the project type to pick for this would be a game type using the third person template. Leave all these settings defaulted like this as blueprint, desktop, maximum, and the starter content, and give your project a name. In this particular case, I'm gonna use an existing project, which is this one right here, and just assume for a moment that I did not have a MetaHumans folder. I've already done this workflow, and that's why it is here, but for you, you probably don't already have a MetaHumans folder. If, however, you have an existing project and you already have a MetaHumans folder, if that MetaHuman is an old one from version four of the Unreal Engine, you will get a warning that says you should not mix newer MetaHumans with older MetaHumans. And what I did for my project is I completely removed this folder from my Windows directory and brought the new one in. Well, how do I do that? How do I bring in a new one? Go up to the window menu and go to Quixel Bridge. And just like we saw when we were online through the browser, you will go to your MetaHumans area from within the Unreal Engine application. And you should see a folder called My MetaHumans. If you don't see this folder, you need to go up here to the top right and make sure that you log in with your credentials. Once you're logged in, you should see as I do, the three MetaHumans that you created online. This was my first one, and this is the most recent. So for those of you that want to bring in the most recent version of your MetaHuman, you will click on it, and then down here, I choose medium quality, that's sufficient, and then I will click this button to either download or update. I already have it, so I'm not going to, 
But here's the last thing I want to tell you before we start the workflow. When you click generate or download, it could take as long as 20 or 30 minutes and just be patient. When that is all done, you'll then click the add button and now we'll add this MetaHuman to your project. If for some reason when you click add, it doesn't come in, just close this window, reopen it again, go into the Quixel bridge, go back to your MetaHumans, click on my MetaHumans once you're logged in, get to the right one, and then click add, and it should work. For some reason, there's like a small bug where sometimes the add button does not do it. Once you click add, you will get some messages that you need to enable some plugins quite likely. You will need to restart your browser and you will have to update your shaders. And that could take as long as 15 minutes. So just be patient. And when you're all done, you'll be right here like this with a MetaHumans folder all ready to go. All right, all the shaders are done. And now I've got my MetaHumans folder with my new updated MetaHuman. And this is Eric AI3. First thing I'm gonna do is make a backup. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose duplicate. And the reason that I'm making a backup and suggest that you do as well, I'll just do underscore BU, is that if something were to go wrong in the configuration, I always have this original pristine version that I can go back to and even make another duplicate of it if I wanna start all over. So I'm just gonna keep this here, but we won't be using it. I will double click now the blueprint class. So follow along. And once we open up the MetaHuman, there are some settings that we need to change. And this could seem overwhelming at first, but trust me, I will walk you guys through step-by-step step on how to replace the mannequin with your MetaHuman character. First thing, go up to the top and choose class settings because the MetaHuman is an actor. And if we weren't gonna use our MetaHuman as a third person character, this would be fine because we could drag our MetaHuman in and we could do motion capture and we could create animation sequences. But the specific workflow that I'm showing you is so that I can replace the default third person mannequin with my MetaHuman. And to do that, I need to change this from actor, type in BP, and you can type BP third, to spell it wrong, not like I did. Um, and you'll see BP underscore third person character, and there you go. And that will change the third person character as the class settings type. Now, if we look over here on the left-hand side, the next change we need to make is take this root and everything underneath it, which is a lot of components of the body, face, and such, and bring it together. So I'm gonna click and drag root up to mesh. And in my previous video, I talked about deleting the root. Do not do that anymore. That is not something that you wanna do. Just leave it right as is, and you can click on save at this point. Now that we've taken that step, let's go over here and change to looking at the viewport. You'll see we have event graph, construction script, and viewport. And you'll now see the MetaHuman on top of the mannequin. And the first thing you can see is I've got tennis shoes now and a different sweatshirt, so you know that I have in fact brought in a new MetaHuman. Now if you notice here over on the right hand side, the location and rotation 89 and 90 is incorrect and that's why we look the way we do. So right over to the right, you'll see a little reset arrow and just click that and that will drop your MetaHuman down closer to in line with the mannequin, all right? Once you've done that, you can certainly click save. Next step is to come over to the variables area and these have changed a lot in the newer releases of the MetaHumans. So when you choose the use live retarget mode, you'll notice on the right now, we have an option to use live retarget mode and it's not checked. So I want you to check that and activate that. And what you'll notice now is that the body has moved into position and your body also is moving. If I zoom in, you'll notice that my hands are moving with the mannequin. If I turn that on or off, it makes that change. So you know you're in the right place when you see that. And you can click on compile up in the top left and click on save again. All right, next step, we are getting very, very close. Click on mesh in the over in the left hand side. Make sure that everything is there because that's selecting all these pieces. And we wanna type VIS for visible. And what you'll see under rendering where it says the word visible is checked, we want to uncheck that. 
And when we uncheck that, that is removing the third person mannequin. Now, some of you that are professional game developers, at this point, you might think, you know, Eric, this is a hack. This is a cheat, the way that you're setting it up. And I'll I'll fully own that. This, this workflow is really good for VTubers. It's really good for people that are creating animation sequences. If you're a professional game developer, then you're probably creating a blueprint for your third person from scratch. Whereas what we are doing is taking the mannequin and replacing the mannequin with our metahuman. All right. Now come down, you'll see down here, it says visibility based anim tick option. Change that to the first one, always tick pose and refresh bones. Always tick pose and refresh bones. Make that change as well. Click on compile in the top left and click on save. You can close that completely. And the next thing we need to do is change under the game mode, which third person character we're going to use. So scroll on your left-hand side in your project. If you followed along uh, my other videos, you've created a project that uses the third person uh, template. And inside of this, you'll find a blueprints folder. And inside that, you'll find this little controller inside a monitor, and that is the third person game mode. So double click that, open it up. And what you're doing here is you're looking where it says default pawn class coming across. And now you're gonna change to your metahuman and you should see the metahuman's name here. If for some reason you didn't, that's because in the first step where we change the class settings to be a third person character, that's what made this option available here. Uh, and by changing the class and by changing the pawn class to be Eric, once I click compile in the top left and save and close this, if everything went as planned, when I click play, Eric is now gonna show up as my third person character. And he did. And I not only can see the sweatshirt, the sneakers to know I've got the right one, but if I now move my keys, he works. And this again is the workflow for version 5.0.3 of the Unreal Engine. And you need to see my other video if you're using Unreal Engine 5.1, because there's a good chance that he won't move if you are using Unreal Engine 5.1. This works for 5.0.3. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is how to turn on motion capture. If you notice my face is not moving, my head is not moving, even though I have my iPhone set up. Now, before I show you the workflow for that, I just wanna let you guys know, I have another video which shows how to configure LiveLink on your iPhone, and you need to do that first before what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna hit escape to stop the simulator and I need to go back to my MetaHuman. So go over to your MetaHumans folder, find the folder with your MetaHuman, be sure not to click on the backup one, you want the original one, and open it up. And there's a few things that we need to set. The first thing we wanna do is come over to the left where it says Live Link, and then open up the Live Link dropdown so you can see the AR kit uh, settings. Click on the very first one, and over on your right, if you have your iPhone with Live Link running and properly configured, when you click this drop down, you should see your iPhone. If that is not showing, make sure Live Link is running on your phone. And if you haven't gone through my Live Link tutorial, be sure to watch that one. With that checked, go ahead down to the next one where it says use AR kit face and choose that one. And now check the box over here on the right that says to use the AR kit face. Activate that. Go up to the top left, click on compile, and click on save. Next thing to do is go over to where it says face on the left hand side. So you're selecting the face object of your 3D character. And you'll notice now on the right, there is a skeletal mesh right here. It has a little picture of probably a head and body. And this is the new workflow. This is what was required for the newer metahumans. Uh, and I believe the upgrade to 5.0.3, but for sure needed for the new MetaHuman blueprints. What you wanna do is double click and you will get this funny looking facial piece right here with all the different bones. And what you need to do is go up to the very top right. It looks like an org chart. It's the facial animation blueprint and click on that. And once you click on that, you can see there's a blueprint for handling the facial animations. 
So now that you're right here, what you want to do is look over here on the right where it says live link face subject. And you probably see something that says like black iPhone. I think that's the default value, but whatever you see there, doesn't matter. I want to make sure you have chosen your iPhone. Okay. And you got to choose that. And that was the difference in the workflow from the newer metahumans and the older ones was to go into this facial area and do that. And you can actually see my face is kind of moving here on the left. So the last step is if you notice it says live link face head, when I activate that, now my head is moving. If I deactivate that, the head doesn't move. And if I activate that, my head is now moving. So we are so close, you guys. When I click save and compile as you should do, and then I close the window and I start the simulator, lo and behold, my head is moving, my face is moving, and everything is working great. And in my other videos, I have set up some scenes that enable me to move around like this and get cameras right in the right place. You can see my iPhone's not pointing exactly where I need to be so I can move my phone a little bit, get my eyes to look at you guys a little bit better like that, make some good eye contact. And we have completed the workflow. That's it, you guys. That is how to set up your metahuman as your third person character and activate motion capture for your face and your mouth. Woo! Great job. In my next video, I will show you guys how to do this for Unreal Engine 5.1. And as I said in the beginning of the video, don't forget to look in the description for any updates that may occur as Epic Games is constantly changing the MetaHuman workflow. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, it would mean a lot to me if you just click on that like button, maybe drop a comment, and certainly if you feel you want to, subscribe to the channel. All right, you guys, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. And don't forget to look at these videos right here at the end that I have carefully selected for you that might be helpful on your journey.